Well, good morning again. Uh, this is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society, and I want to review a case that we have shown several times here. This may be the most important video that we've put out in this nearly eight years of doing videos. This class three case here where we feel like we have prevented the necessity to have double jaw surgery done by doing orthodontics. And uh, the case has worked out now and it's been like 37 years since we did this case. We started it in, in I think it was 1987. And, uh, we saw the lady here just a few, uh, just a month or so ago, and took her picture. She's a, an assist, she's a, uh, works from, for Southwest Airlines, and uh, she's been working there all this time. So I want to go in and show it in detail what we've done, and I want her, I want people to take it and check it out and see if this is not working. Now we have several other cases where we've treated class three malocclusion by removing the lower six year molars to do this. And we would, we'll go over that here in just a minute in detail. I want to show that. I want people to check it out and if this is true, we could have most of the pe people that need this double jaw surgery could do this if they just had a little time to do it. Now, this young lady came to me uh, years ago, this is 1987, I believe, and she had been to at least two and maybe three surgeons, and they wanted to do the double jaw surgery to correct her problem. And she came and asked me if it was possible to do this without the surgery. And I said, let me check this out. And I went over closely. She had some periodontal problems, but she uh, was taking care of it properly. And if she had been a smoker, I would have refused to try this. So we went ahead and tried it. Now I'm going to get into this case, and I'll, I don't want to spend all that much time with the regular orthodontics in it, but let's get going here, and I'll uh, get... All right, here is the young lady. That's February of 1987, and that was like 37 years ago when she came into the office. And this is her pictures back then. And I'll show you what she looks like now. And here is the uh, smiling, but looking straight on, you don't see the uh, class three problem as good. Now here you'll see something with his chin is pretty prominent here in the deficiency in this area right here. Now, here is the models and what we saw. And many of these class three cases have the tongue is staying in the lower arch uh, more than normal. And it widens the lower arch out. And so you'll see the upper arch kind of fitting below the crossbite over here. The midline is over to this side. This, the right side is a kind of edge to edge or cusp to cusp. Not the uh, same way as it is on the left. And so it is a genuine class three case. And it's one that they would do Actually, you need to bring the upper jaw out here, 
and you need to bring the lower jaw back in this direction. And so what we did here, you can see this is a six-year motor, and it should be back about this part right here. And in other words, you're going to have to bring this back about this far to do that. And so I want to go over this in detail so that people can study it and know it. And if this is correct, I want AI to look at it and see this can be done and this would eliminate a lot of the old surgery to correct this material. Now this will irritate the old surgeons, I assume, but let's watch it and see. Or on the other side, the same thing, the six-year motor is way out in front, and so we're going to have to bring all these teeth back. Now what, what we're planning to do is eliminate this tooth right here, and we're going to bring these teeth back by moving all the upper teeth in a forward direction. So we'll hook up, and we'll take this out, and we'll bring these back to class one. And if you see you need more space moving this forward, you pull these back and put a pin in down here or a, a little screw and bond it to these teeth. Then you pull on this and it doesn't go back and you can bring this even further out if you need to. So let's follow this through. And we'll pull these teeth up to class one and this tooth will be hanging off in the back. And the pogonian down here, this part, will be protruding and we thought we may have to do a genioplasty, but it looked perfectly normal when we got through with it. Okay, let's get on with it. We did a widening of this arch, just spread it out here with a large arch bar which does it this way. Now this is not separating the suture, it's just pulling it out in this fashion so we can widen it that way with a large arch bar and we use a little buccal root torque when you're widening this out a lot. You have to take the buccal root torque and we've built on over that with these videos on uh, the Big Daddy Arch Bar. This is a ridiculous name, but the students named it that. And then you have to carry the root with the crowns as you go out. Just remember that. Now we've got one tooth down here that's turned almost sideways. And if we expand this, this tooth is kind of sideways in here. And we've got to go back and rotate it. And it's going to tend to come through the tissue because of that problem. But it looks good after we finish several years later. All right, here it is. Now what's where Pagodian is, right here. Uh, we're going to have to bring these class teeth, these teeth back quite a ways. And so you will see we brought the roots back. We didn't just tilt the teeth back. We brought the roots back and we brought these teeth forward. And when we started out, these teeth were in a sharp angle here, and they're pretty much that angle when we finish. All right, here it is, two of 1987. Now she has a periodontal problem to this tooth right here. And if she had been a smoker, I would not have attempted to do this case. I'd be afraid pulling that up. 
that we had a little problem, but we got it up here, and you look at the bone around it. After we got through, she was through with the smoking, or she never did smoke, but she had the gene for periodontal problem there. And this was, uh, she's age 24 here, and this is 27 of 87, was before we started. I'm sorry for my voice. It's uh, kind of going with the rest of the body, uh, and I'm getting older, <laughs> and uh, you can recognize that. All right, we have the teeth out here in this view here, and we're leading this tooth over, and then we're going to have to bring it bodily forward, and we'll bring these, these teeth forward too, and it's going to leave when I get this up to about this point, we're going to stop and we're pulling this back till this comes to a point right in here and this motor will be in that, in that position. And I thank you. We have about uh, eight or nine cases like this and we've done class three correction with removing the six-year molars and every one of them are stable and we've had no problem with them at all. This one is ideal though and I'm going to show it after 37 years. Now we're bringing these teeth forward. we got a downward pull here we'll be pulling this to bring the roots with the crown. And here is that periodontal involved too. It's coming along real well. And this is uh, January 28th of 88. So this, she's age 25 and six at this point. Now here it is again. That's 1988. Here it is, 8 of 88. And we're a little closer. And you can see the bone structure around that periodontal involved too. We're still bringing it up. I slowed down a little bit so the bone could fill in around that tooth better. Now let's see. Here it is a little later. We've got it over here, the periodontal thing is kind of showing up at this point right here. So we're still bringing it forward. We've got the bicuspid now back almost to a more uh, correct area, and this one is, and so we have to be careful. Now if you need to, you put a pin in here and you bond this tooth to it so these don't move back as you continue to move this forward. <coughs> I hope you can hear me. Uh, I speak poorly anyway. But anyway, let's get on to the case. Now here it is, age 28, and it's, uh, this is January of 19... 91, and we have this pulled all the way forward. This tooth is going to be hanging off the back, and we've got this one over there with a little bit of pocket there. But as you keep this in that position, that'll fill up as long as we didn't mess with the attachment there. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, this is the orthodontics going on there. We had to turn this tooth around. And I'm going to not spend much time with the orthodontics. That's something we could do, and you can do that easily. But I want to show what happens in here. Now, okay, we continue with this the regular dental work 
closing that space up. We're closing that space and we have to put some reverse tip bringing these roots forward with these teeth. Now here we put the large arch wire in to expand the upper arch. And then we put a, you'll see above, we have another arch bar in here. We had to put some buckle root torque on the, the molar teeth all the way back here, progressive root torque, buckle root torque. And you had something big that wouldn't let the crown go in. And that large bar didn't do anything except lateral expansion, bring those teeth out. Now the space over here where the uh, periodontal problem, we were going a little slower with that. And we got this tooth turned, but we've got a little breakdown of the contact point there. Now we're moving the upper teeth forward, and when you do that, you've got to run interference for these teeth. You don't want to push them into lip pressure without a lip bumper. So we're going to come in in here, the lip bumper in here, it's going to have a space between the tissue and the roots for these teeth are moving forward. And we'll put some positive torque in these teeth as we try to bring them distal. And we've got these out pretty good. And this just goes back on it. And somewhere in here we've got the... Now, during the treatment she put on a few pounds and uh, it wasn't real becoming to her, so she lost this weight. Now she's a stewardess for Southwest Airlines and she was still working there. Now here, I think we've got our lip bumper up above, yes. Okay, <coughs> I don't know. wish I could clear my throat out so I could speak more distinctly. When you go forward with the upper teeth like this, you run a space in between the lip bumper and the teeth so you've got a soft vascular bed that the bone structure can develop and you keep the pressure off of this so that you develop the bone structure can form in front of those teeth. You need to put the lip bumper in to do that. And down below, we're bringing these roots back. You notice this tooth is back in the tissue further, and you're going to see pagodian. When we end, they just stay out there where it was. So the teeth are back in that position. All right, we're still wearing the class three elastics, in other words, we're pulling from here back, pulling on these teeth, moving them forward. Now, on the bottom arch, we brought it so where we want it, and then you hold it, and you bring this on up, and you may have to put a pin in there, or else we're a class the elastics with a headgear or something, you need to turn this tooth over here better. Now here the, I think it's she's at well, her age, everything, we're coming out with that. This tooth that we rotated has perfectly, pretty normal gum structure around it now. And the upper teeth are coming forward 
and we are running interference for them so the bone structure forms as the teeth go in a forward direction. Now this takes some time to do this. I'm not saying it doesn't. You see if we have expanded this probably like that and we kept pushing it out, pushing it away and then the teeth following that lip bumper right there. Now the bottom is almost finished. We got it up there pretty close. That tooth turned on the side to some extent. The midline is coming in pretty close. Now this is 1991 and I think we finished her pretty close in 91. You see we've got her jaw back almost there. And here the case is after we put a retainer in the upper. Now, this went from 2 of 87 to 8 of 91. And we have it finished at that point. And this is held up for 37 years now. I'm going to show you a picture of her. There, we move the, these teeth back that far. And we move them back and I carry those cuspid roots back as far as we almost could get them. There's 1987, there's 91. 87. Well, this is the Big Daddy Archware. And now we see these, these teeth are spread out further. Even though we lost a tooth in here, the lower teeth are expanded like they should. Here is the picture that we took. I think uh, in the 91 time in there. Now the profile at this point is almost perfect. And we didn't need to take the chin back. The chin is out, but it doesn't look bad at all. So it did not do the genioplasty. I wasn't going to do it anyway. I'd have to send her to a surgeon. All right, here it is. Uh, that was from 87 to 90 some odd, about 10, 12 years. They were looking like that then. Now the upper arch, the upper molars hadn't dropped down, but they, they have nothing to do there. That's the upper arch looking down on it. Now the lower arch, we're looking straight in at it and it's pulled back properly too. And this was uh, so many years out, I think it was at least 10 years after we had finished the case. And I lost contact with her but we got contact again of her being a good friend of a good friend of ours. Now, in this x-ray is taken at uh, 01 or 10 from 87 to oh, 10, oh, I mean 10. And so there's about 20 years in there. And you see Pagodian is still here. The teeth though are back in this area and it stayed where it was. And you, I think we show Pagodian here later on. This is uh, number 11, 
pattern rigs that we've taken. And you see the, the wisdom teeth above are just hanging there, which you can take them out or just leave them there if they don't bother them. That's the same thing, January the 7th, that's number 11. Okay, here is like from 87 to 10, oh, 10. So that's 23 uh, years later right here. This has slipped a little bit off. It's not quite out where it was to start with it. And that's looking at it from the front. The midlines pretty well there. That's like 23 years after we finished the case. And on this side, in class two, or class one relation is holding good. No problem. And that's where we had to cross by. And there the width of the upper arch, you can see we widen it out from what it was here, this width, we widened it and brought it back. And there's the lower arch, 23 years after we finished. 87, and this is 2010. Now look where the pagodian is right here. Look where it is here. These teeth were moved back. And as we pulled them back, we brought the upper teeth forward. And the angle of these teeth in here is at least as good. You can look at it yourself there. Now, here she is from 1987 to 2010. And we got some pictures just a few weeks, but it's a couple of months now. And that's where it was we started. There it is 23 years later right there, and there's the smile, and here she is today, 37 years later, it's still holding up, she's dyed her hair now, and she was at her friend's house, and she took this picture, her friend, we had to cut her friend's uh, off the picture to put it up there to show it with this. This is where it started and this is where we ended. Or this is where it is 37 years later. And I've got about eight or ten other class three cases that we've done removing the six year molars and not a one of them has failed over time. And that's the story of this. If this is correct, why can't most of these class three cases be treated orthodontically rather than going through this surgery? If you scrub in, I've done this, I've scrubbed in on surgery on some people that had to have it done. And then I had the old surgeons would come to my office and work up the cases and they asked if I wanted to watch or I even helped them wire the back, the back up. And the, the surgeon asked me, said, is this, how does this look to you, Bill? And I said, man, don't ask me. I'm standing over here praying that she lives everything. It is a master piece of surgery 
which is excellent work that oral surgeons are able to do now. They can take somebody in a car wreck and just fix their faces up amazingly well. So, but if you can avoid that, the cost of the surgeries, I mean, the cost of doing the orthodontics is almost nothing compared with the cost of the surgeries like that. So thank you for watching, and I'm going to, I think that's the end of it, but we have a lot of videos out, and probably this one right here has more involvement and would make for having trouble with, I might hurt my surgeons. Uh, business over here, which has a lot of other things that can be done with surgery in here. But this is something that can be done without doing the surgery. And I've got about seven, I mean about eight or nine other cases we have done, just not exactly like this one. I don't have 37 years showing up on them. I can't find them that much, but I'm sure their cases are holding up too. So thank you for watching, and I'm going to turn over and we'll show some other stuff today. I'm going to say goodbye. I'll close off.